My name is uh, Karthik Gajala. I work in the cloud engineering team at eBay. Our team is responsible for all of infrastructure as a service and platform as a service at eBay. So I, my name is Xiao Gang. I uh, come from Shanghai, China. So I'm currently a cloud engineer at eBay, and I'm recently working on the next generation uh, containerized platform uh, based on Kubernetes at eBay. Today we're going to walk you through um, our journey in building um, a continuous integration platform on top of Kubernetes. Um, we'll cover, um, just in a nutshell, um, an introduction to our infrastructure and our applications, what they do at eBay. And um, you know, um, walk you through our journey in building this platform. Shogang will go more into the details, uh, the technology details. We'll cover what we've learned, what worked, what did not work, how we fix things, uh, and then uh, like where we look into going further with this platform. I hope uh, all of you should know eBay. Uh, we've been around for some time, and I uh, hope uh, most of you had an experience either buying or selling on eBay. Um, we are a global company. We are one of the largest marketplaces online. We have 168 million buyers around the world. Um, at a quarterly, we do roughly $22 billion in gross merchandise volume. That's the total amount of transactions that happen in the marketplace. Um, about half of it comes through mobile devices, and more than half is international. So we have quite a bit of uh, customers across the globe. Um, um, Eighty-eight percent of our sales are actually fixed price, and more than eighty percent are new items that are um, bought or sold on eBay. At any given point in time, you're looking at more than a billion items for sale on eBay. So, a business of this size requires a very large infrastructure as well. Um, we started our journey in building a private cloud about six years ago. Um, we have a private cloud that does everything between, with containers, virtual machines, bare metals. All aspects of the data center are fairly automated. We manage a fleet of about 80,000 bare metals, more than 200,000 virtual machines, and um, roughly five petabytes of managed storage today that our cloud platform manages. So what you see on eBay.com is a composition of about 4,000 different applications that are serving more than 100 billion requests a day. Uh, our internal cloud platform hosts more than 95% of the traffic that comes into eBay.com. The applications that are written on eBay are very diverse in nature. Uh, we have a very um, good choice of programming languages our development teams use uh, with Java, you know, traditionally been Java, but um, a lot more on Node and Scala and uh, more recently with Go. These development teams are continuously changing their code, releasing their changes to production, and the continuous integration is a very critical piece of it. Um, so the platform that we're going to talk more in detail about that today does roughly 10,000 bills a day, about 300,000 a month. So a few years ago, um, the continuous integration journey at eBay has been that um, there's a self-service way to get virtual machines, and every team would set up their own Jenkins instance on that virtual machine, they would find their own way to get the right set of plugins, configurations, and all that, right? Um, that only went on for some time. Then we've realized that um, things are getting out of control. Uh, and a few years ago, um, we started a journey where we built uh, a Mesos-based continuous integration platform. Um, we have two separate Mesos clusters for masters and slaves. 
Um, and um, we have a pass layer that provisions uh, a Jenkins instance on this Mesos, and users would uh, get that self-service. Um, we deployed a shared file system, so things could be persisted, the configurations to the file system. Uh, about a year ago, we made a strategic shift towards Kubernetes. Um, that's when we started the journey of rewriting the system to run on, um, on Kubernetes. Thanks to Carlos for his uh, plugin with um, uh, the Mesos plugin. I know, he's sitting right here. I attended your talk this morning, very good. Um, so um, we build, uh, we run today our continuous integration completely on Kubernetes um, with Jenkins. Um, we run two separate pools of nodes for masters and uh, the builder pods. Uh, we have separate images for both masters and uh, the slaves. Um, we use service, we use ingress, um, we use traffic as an implementation for ingress controller inside Kubernetes. We use persistent volume claims, the construct of Kubernetes to persist the configurations for masters. Um, that itself is backed by Ceph. Um, it's uh, one of our managed storage at eBay. We have petabytes of it. Um, that forms the backend for the PVCs. Uh, it's been pretty highly scalable and resilient for us. I'll let Shogun go more into the technical details of the architecture. Thank you, Krasi. Okay, so in the next few minutes, I will show you our C as a service platform um, in deep on how we build our C as a service platform based on Kubernetes. Uh, let's take a look at the architecture first, but before that, before we go deep into architecture, please be noticed that the big blue rectangle is the Kubernetes cluster. The light blue boxes are Kubernetes pod. The red line in the diagram shows C as a service platform control plane, while the blue line in the right uh, represents the data plane. Okay, so let's start from a control plane. If a user wants a CI, he or she can easily post the third-party resource, CI config specification, either through pass platform at eBay or against the Kube API server directly, to tell Kubernetes cluster that, hey, I want a CI, and here is my definition. There is a CI controller running in the cluster which watches the CI config object and converts <coughs> the user requirement, user definition of CI to a real CI instance. Here's the works CI controller do. So firstly, it will create a persistent volume which will be used as a Jenkins configuration um, storage. And then CI controller will spin up on a Jenkins master part mount with this volume and we leverage replication controller to provide high availability for the Jenkins instance. Besides that, CI controller also create a service for this Jenkins master as well as the ingress object which wrote the request to this service. So the blue line. Uh, when there's a build happens, the build request actually first touch the ingress endpoint of CI as a service platform. Actually, there's no ingress controller provided by Kubernetes, but we find that traffic ingress controller is amazing, which can meet our requirement very well. Traffic ingress controller will help to route the builder request to specific service, and eventually the Jenkins master part Jenkins master will leverage the Jenkins Kubernetes plugin, right? Th thank you so much, <laughs> and talk to Kubernetes API server to spin up Jenkins sleep pod to do the actual build. This is the whole architecture of our system. Before going on, 
let's think about a, a, a question. So why we need a third party resource, CI config with a controller loop to spin up a Jenkins master? Some people who are familiar with Kubernetes would see that that is amazing because that is model driven. But is model driven the real reason we use it? I would say no. Model driven is only in a methodology, but not a solution. We should always think from a user requirement perspective. So let's, let's think about it. What do user really want? In most of the cases, what a user want is a CI on a build, while not a heavy Jenkins, right? So a CI is nothing but a process from source code to manifest. It does not equal to Jenkins. Jenkins is only one of the build engines. So let's look at the CI config model in detail how we model the process from source code to manifest. We use third-party resource in Kubernetes. We register a new kind. Uh, we call it CI config. The most important part here is the specification. If a user are using Git as their uh, source repository, he can uh, he need to specify the Git UI in the source section. Strategy means what kind of agent you use. If you're using Jenkins, Jenkins, you need to specify the Jenkins master image with volume size. There can be more and more other build engines besides Jenkins. In builders uh, section, currently we support two major builds standard build and generic build. As Karthik just mentioned several minutes ago, there are four major tech stacks in eBay, that is Java, Node.js, Scala, and Python. As a platform service, what we provide to our users is the most popular um, cases, that is uh, Java and Node.js, which covers almost 8% of the cases at eBay. We call it standard build. User does not need to provide their own builder image. They just claim their stack, for example, Maven. For others, such as Python and Scala, and some uh, very specific build requirements, we dedicate the manageability to our user so that they can build their builder image and claim in C as a service configuration. So from CI controller side, after user post CI config into Kube, Kube API server, the controller will do the real provisioning of the CI instance, which is PVC, pod, service, the ingress I just mentioned. We also support hibernation. Why? Because per our experience, in our journey, we find that over 60% of the CIs, they are not actively used. Some CIs, they create from the first day, but no use, actually, because of different reasons. So as a platform, we pro provide a platform, we want to make a high utilization of our compute nodes. What we do is hibernation. By specify hibernate flag in the CI config specification, CI controller will tear down the master pod while leave persistent volume because there is data in persistent volume. And also, service can be deleted, but it will leave ingress. What's the reason? I will talk more about the hibernation in, uh, in the following slides. This is what the build really, really happens when there is a build request initialized either by GitHub or a human being. Jenkins master will use Kubernetes plugin to spin up Jenkins sleeve pod to do the build. Jenkins Kubernetes plugin is nothing but a plugin which manages 
the Jenkins sleep port man, uh, the life cycle on it. The plugin will compose a Jenkins sleep port specification according to the port template configuration and post to API server. Then there's a Jenkins sleep port up and do the build. There are a bunch of uh, specification details you can configure in the plugin configuration, actually. But here, I just want to list three most important ones we think here. The first one is Docker image. It's the builder image. We recommend our user to compose all the build dependencies, such as libraries and packages, into a same builder image. A builder image should be self-contained, which can be used in CI or shared by different development environment. Tender toleration, if you want your builder to tolerate it to a specified nodes. Volume mount, such as secret. For example, your user might want to push their build manifest to a protected repository, which needs a credential. I'm sure that they don't want to share the credential with you, right? They just need to store into Kubernetes secret and mount the secret into their build pod. Host path mount. So why host path mount? Um, I just mentioned that uh, it is a best practice to compose all the, uh, uh, the build dependencies into Docker builder image. But if your project depends on too many dependencies, your builder image going to be very huge, maybe 10 gigabytes. So it will take a long time for Kubernetes to bring up your sleep pod because it needs to pull image. So some people would say that dependency can be downloaded during build time or runtime, such as Maven, but it still needs time. How could we solve this problem? We mount a specific host path from our Kubernetes node to the sleep builder as the Maven cache, which means on this node, only the first builder needs to download the Maven dependencies and it can be reused in the proceed build. In this way, we save a lot of time. Okay, ingress. Actually, without ingress, there's a lot of ways to expose your Jenkins master service to, to the user. But uh, for example, we use load balancer VIP or node port. But we have uh, met the following two major problems when we design CI as a service platform. The first one, every CI instance needs a durable access point for a user. If we use a load balancer, that would be a huge waste of VIP. As you know that load balancer is really expensive. And there's only one pod, Jenkins master pod, in each whip. It's a huge waste, right? By leveraging ingress, we can use the L7 routing so that we only need one whip for the ingress endpoint. The second one, in eBay, it's it is not allowed to use a wildcard SSL certificate. It's not secure enough. And it's really hard to issue a specific SSL certificate for each CI in short term. Then by enabling ingress, actually we only need one certificate for the ingress endpoint. Here is an example. CIAS.corp.eb.com is our ingress endpoint for CI as a service platform. Slash CIA is the CI instance. That is L7 pass. So when user visit CIA, the request will go to load balancer first and then reach 
traffic and uh, ingress and uh, ingress controller. Here, TRS just term terminated. And the ingress controller will do L7 routing according to the mapping CIA with the specific service we created for the Jenkins master. And then just wrote the request to that Jenkins master in cluster using cluster IP. Hibernation. As I mentioned that uh, around 60% of the CIs are not actively used. For example, not used in recent 30 days. So what we do is hibernation. Um, the CI controller will delete the service and the pod um, to release the resource, but leave PV and ingress there. It's very easy to understand why we leave a PV, because there's a Jenkins master data configuration in the persistent volume. But why we leave ingress? Hibernate a CI does not mean we delete that CI. Maybe a user want to reuse it after 30 days. So we configure the ingress, the L7 routing from the, uh, the existing service to a reactive service. That means if the user revisit their CI, the request will be handled by the reactive service. The reactive service do a very simple job. It just change the hibernate flag in the CI config specification. And then CI controller will wake up this CI by recreating the Jenkins master pod in seconds and mount the existing volume and recreate a service and configure the ingress routing from recreation service to that new service, which point to the real Jenkins master pod. So in this way, in several seconds, user can get their CI back without any more click. Okay, this is all about the details of our system, C as a service platform. And uh, next, I will hand over to Karthik for the learnings and the roadmap in the future. Thank you, Shaga. So a few things, uh, you know, just to reiteration of what we covered in detail. Um, I think the CI config as an abstraction um, is a, uh, is a very helpful thing for us. Um, if uh, users want to use something other than uh, Jenkins, uh, they can use the same abstraction uh, from a platform perspective. Um, we run two separate uh, uh, node pools for both masters and builders. Uh, on the builders is where we use the host path mount to leverage um, the Maven caches, so the builds happen very quickly. One of the things that we uh, take very seriously at eBay is developer productivity. So we want to make sure that um, uh, the builds are occurring as fast as they can. And whatever tuning that we need to do to make them faster, uh, we invest into that. Um, the pod templates is a very powerful concept. I think uh, we saw uh, much more detail today in the Cloud Beast session about how to use pod templates. Um, we've also built an internal monitoring system for this. Um, we roughly have about 2,000 Jenkins masters uh, at any given time on our platform. And uh, uh, we've noticed some um, issues. Uh, sometimes traffic does not catch the creation of new CIs. Um, so we continuously monitor all our CIs to make sure that they're available. And if they are not, um, we look into why they're not. Um, last thing is, um, you know, um, we've been using the persistent volumes uh, for CIs. Um, uh, and uh, the volume attachment and detachment has been pretty, um, we went through some issues in terms of reliability. And uh, we've uh, introduced uh, fixes into the Kubernetes layer, as well as uh, under the Kubernetes cloud layer 
to make that much more robust. Uh, some of the things that uh, we are actively looking into right now is um, today we use um, all of our CI platforms on one Kubernetes cluster in one availability zone in our private cloud. We're finding ways to see if we can uh, span across multiple uh, clusters. So uh, based on uh, where the resources are available, we can actually schedule uh, the workloads across multiple clusters. Uh, some of the challenges that we've noticed with PVCs is something that um, uh, keep bothering us. So we are looking into maybe if object store is a good semantic that we can use for persistence. Uh, we're playing with Swift. We have, an, we have a huge um, Swift uh, in our private cloud today, a um, few petabytes of Swift. Uh, so we're, we're looking at that. Um, the other thing is the declarative pipelines. We don't use much of Jenkins pipelines features that we saw today, but uh, we're looking more into it. Um, then one of the things that we are also looking into is, is uh, leverage public clouds. We've done a prototype this year um, to see if uh, we can do our builds on public clouds seamlessly. That's an interesting area for us to look into uh, next year. All right, uh, that's all we have, and uh, we are actively hiring. Um, if you are interested uh, to work at a platform of our scale, you know, please reach out to me. My email address is right there. Thank you. <laughs>